how was the the trip um, to Canada? I don't want to spoil it, right? But that video is good because I was gonna quit. Oh man, I can't, I can't, I can't, right? And the guy's like, "What do you mean you can't? Come on, come on!" And I'm like, oh, "I can't, man. I can't eat anymore." And he's like, "We believe in you." And then the like the lady behind the bar was like, "You got this, man!" And I was like, "I don't think I do got this." But then uh, I put some in the edit, like some dramatic kind of orchestral war music. That kind of music starts, yeah, yeah. and I was like, right. Yeah, Mrs. Beards, pack, pack me some <laughs> spare undies. What's the point in having them if you're not going to use them? <laughs> if I shoot my pants, I shoot my pants. And uh, I shoot my pants, actually. But, like... <laughs> I'm Adam. And I'm Josh. Yeah, the boys are back in town. <laughs> like a uh, fucking shit ant and deck. <laughs> Only with more swearing and less drink driving. <laughs> That's this video demonetized. Oh, can, I, can I say that? <laughs> demonetized. How's it going, man? It's good to see you. Hey, what did you have in Canada out there? Like you've come back just full lo- of beans. Loads of fucking ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, it's just nice to see. It's nice to see you. We got George. It's bank holiday Monday. It won't be when you listen or watch. But we 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 dragged George out of bed. He smells like beer and <laughs> what's that? Chlamydia, and uh, yeah, we're, we're ready to go for another episode. How's it going, man? It's good, mate. It's been a, uh, a peaceful two weeks. I, I must admit, it's been uh, it's gone very fast. Although you said that your trip had gone rather slow, felt yeah. like yeah. If, I don't know. Sometimes it's weird, isn't it? Time, you know, time being relative and all. Like sometimes it feels like oh, it's getting deep. We've got some mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. DMT. You know, it felt like Vegas felt the the California Vegas trip. Like it felt like I was gone a, a long time, but that it went quickly. Whereas uh, in, uh, I've just recently got back from Canada, in case you didn't know, um, it felt, uh, I don't know, it just felt like, I don't want to say laborious, but it just felt like I was there yeah, yeah, yeah. a long time. I mean, I was there a long time, but it just felt, <laughs> felt like a long time. Mrs. Beard, sense. glad to have you back. Yeah, for about, I don't know, 20 minutes. Then she's ready to kick me back out again, but... Uh, yeah, no, she, yeah, it was, it was cool. I mean, she, she didn't have to wake up early to pick me up this time either, because I got back in at like 430 to the airport. I'd so. have just like figured my own way back anyway, rather than having poor Mrs. Beard. It's only Manchester, man. It's like an hour away. I know, yeah, but she's got better things to do. Do you know what I mean? She doesn't have better things to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Plus she wants to see me. You know, it's like one of those uh, slow motion. I, wouldn't, I think I don't want to embarrass her. Right? She's like, she gets really embarrassed in public, but I always want to do like, do you know when Jim Carrey does a slow motion thing in Ace Ventura? I yeah. want to do that, but like, you know, when she's waiting for me, I go like, <laughs> you know, like give her a big snog, like a dramatic <laughs> slow motion movie scene. But I didn't. I just, I just uh, had like a flashback to when we recorded the chicken wings video and you like give her like a sloppy kiss, you know, after eating your chicken wings in bed. I had to film that, by the way. Imagine how awkward that was. Me, you, and Mrs. Beard. Middle of the day, your two's in bed. Probably yeah. not as awkward as when... Uh, Josh had to film, uh, not you, the other Josh had to film my sister in bed at a house with, the, with <laughs> windows open. <laughs> she's got like three men in her house with a camera. Nice. <laughs> oh, she started an OnlyFans life. <laughs> so if you want to subscribe to Sister Beard's OnlyFans, we'll put a link below. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's, let's uh, start this podcast with the YouTube comment. It's time for a YouTube comment from you. Okay, so our first comment this week is from Progressive Ent 8265 I don't know how you say that. Uh, love this. I've been watching Beard's videos for a while now and didn't realise there was a podcast until yesterday. Now I have so much more stuff to binge. Shout out from St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. Uh, Beard seems so much more unleashed here and I'm all for it. Ah, oh, thanks, mate. Yeah, just got back from your... Well, not, I, I can't say your neck of the woods because uh, Canada's fucking huge. <laughs> it should really be about six countries. But um, yeah, never been to Newfoundland. Uh, I would I would love to, though. and It'd be easy to get to. But um, yeah, thanks for watching, man. I, I will say that the podcast is not as entertaining as my videos, obviously. But uh, it's still something to watch. Uh, so yeah, can thanks we, for watching, man. Can we have that as the channel banner? <laughs> just cut that <laughs> out for it as a channel banner. As a quote. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we need. Anymore? One of my favourite, uh, well, not favourite, actually. I, 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 there was a uh, graphic novel I read when I was at uni, which was actually based in, uh, not St. John's, but out that way, yeah, called Blankets. Read it. It's a bit emo, though, so I mean, maybe you won't enjoy it. I don't know. It's kind of a teenage thing. Sorry, go on, George. Fascinating story there from me. <laughs> Everybody's just bounced sure, out of here. Pop, fucking hot coffee on you. <laughs> All right, his next comment's from Daily Demented 19 ify Creeping up on 20K, any plans for the milestone? Yeah, Josh is going to 
bail out on eating some spicy <laughs> shit probably no I don't we uh, I don't we don't want to tempt fate we, we don't start planning milestones before we've reached them <laughs> <laughs> yeah subscribers going up views going down it's going well is this podcast <laughs> yeah no plans no plans no no but we'll probably have like a don't know we might cheers have a, like, have, have, get some mead get some mead of like a, yeah it'll probably be Christmas when we hit 20 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just yeah. little, little losing subscribers here. <laughs> uh, yeah no we don't but uh, I'm 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 Blown away that 20,000, that's like more than Centre Court at Wimbledon. That's nuts, that, isn't it? I like to use that analogy a lot, you know, when people say, oh, I've got a small channel. Like, well, what's what is Centre Court at Wimbledon? 17,000, isn't it? Is it? I think so. so might... We've already passed it. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like it might be a lot for Wimbledon. People nah, keep... Maybe it's less than that. Maybe it's like 12,000 something. Still a lot. People keep asking if we're going to do another live show, and I just don't think I can like stomach it just yet. Like, I'm still having like night sweats <laughs> from the last one. <laughs> Yeah, that was, I found that quite. As time difficult. goes on, I thought it'd get easier to, like, you know, reminisce. It actually, it's actually get. Have you just farted? No, I think it was some, just, some, someone either just died or, like. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. But, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was tough, wasn't it? Yeah. So maybe we'll uh, we'll wait a little bit longer for another live show. <laughs> Any more comments, George, boy? One last comment from Andy T5677. <laughs> Such a sharp-witted man. Adam is going to make a fantastic, miserable old bloke when he gets older. The signs are there. I'm already old and I'm already a miserable old bloke. Well, didn't somebody like send you a message saying, is Adam really that miserable in real life? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, them daily. I'm like think, more miserable. I don't think I would say I'm miserable. I can be miserable, more miserable here than obviously my channel. But that's because like... Yeah, misery doesn't isn't really a selling point on YouTube, right? So uh, <laughs> I like to kind of lean into it a bit more. Yeah, like I'm the bad cop, he's the good cop, and that's kind of how it works. But I wouldn't say I'm miserable, right? Like, do, do I seem miserable today? No, you're I'm full, full of, of beans, lad. Full of beans today. Yeah. Oh, have you got a section? Because I was gonna, I, I did prepare something. If you recall last time, I said um, I was gonna do a new section called "Shit That Happened While I Was Away." Ah, and I was gonna bring my guitar. I do a little jingle. You got your piano. You got your piano back out. No, I deleted ah. that up. <laughs> um, but then, you know, because George is such a music purist, yes. I feel like if I whip the guitar out, it's gonna be like, "Well, you're not playing that right, are you?" Um, so I didn't bring it. But anyway, uh, sh- shall I just riff a list of this real quick? Yeah, man. Yeah. So while I was away, things that happened: Arsenal spunked the PL title. Yeah, Premier League. <laughs> For the people that watch what, football. Do you mean spunked in a good way or a bad way? No, sp- <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad way, like as in wasted it. I don't know. You know, like they blew it, basically. Oh, right. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's still mathematically possible, but it's, you know, not going to happen. Um, and the sad thing about that is, uh, actually, a lot of people don't know that I'm an Arsenal fan, um, which I thought I've mentioned like loads of times now. The Guna, but, is that what they call them? Yeah, I mean, like I, would, I wouldn't go that far. I, I realise the irony as well, it's somebody that hates London so much. Um, but uh, yeah, it's but as an Arsenal fan, the past ten years have been pretty painful to watch. Um, and the saddest thing is, is this year we could have lost to Man City twice and still won the league. It's the, the worst part is like dropping points against Southampton and Liverpool, which is what's going to cost them it. But anyway, I, I was watching that while I was uh, away. Um, managed to find a pub actually, it's, uh, episode two I think. I found this pub in Calgary yeah. called the Cat and Fiddle. Um, and uh, it turned out to be, I didn't know this before. They had a, they have a food challenge there, right? Uh, but it's a footy pub. It's like the it's the the, the official home of like the Liverpool uh, Calgary Supporters Club or something. So when I, t- I turn up in the video, I'm like, the fuck? There's two people in Liverpool shirts there. <laughs> and I'm chatting to them. These, these Canadian guys, I'm like, Liverpool fans. He's like, fuck, fuck yeah, man. Fucking love Liverpool. Fuck city, man. I'm like, yeah, all right, chill out, man. Um, but it was just it, they play. It was the only place I saw that wasn't constantly playing ice hockey on TV. So, what, so what you did a challenge there and then watched the footy. Yeah, afterwards. then I watched some footy there. Yeah, I watched that game. I, uh, I, I can't remember what the first game was. Forgotten already. But I, I, on the last day when I was flying home, I didn't fly till eight thirty, right? So I sod all to do all day. So like I checked out the hotel at eleven, stayed in the lobby for like an hour doing some editing. Um, but then that's always a bit weird in public because anyone <laughs> sees you editing like a video of yourself eating food. Um, so then I went to that pub and just watched the footy, yeah, the Ch- uh, Chelsea game, Arsenal Chelsea. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a, it, I don't know, it was not as good to see a, you know, you don't get many pubs to play football. No, no. Uh, what do you, what's it like? You know, when I end up traveling by myself, it's weird when you have to like go for me, well, I suppose it's your fucking life, and it go for meals by yourself <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and sat in, the, in like a, a hotel lobby or a restaurant by yourself. You just like scrolling through, fucking doom it, scrolling for Instagram for hours. I love it, mate. In fact, I think the first, in episode one, I walked into this uh, 
this play, I did like, a, you know, those giant noodle soup challenges. Oh, yeah. For, uh, I walked in, I was like, you know, I'm all full of beans. It's episode number one. I'm like, table for one, please. And she's like, yeah, you can sit anywhere. And I'm just walking up at my table like, I've said that a depressing amount of times in my life. <laughs> table for one. Yeah, I remember you kind of lo- lose track of like how weird it is for one person to go to a restaurant to have a sit down yeah, meal. You know what's even more weird? That you then go in with four cameras, set up a tripod <laughs> and a light and there's people just chilling around you and then you start doing your little narrative to yourself. Like that's fucking very weird. <laughs> yeah, because it's weird. But I'm used to that part now. It's more like... I suppose you can own that when you're like, oh, I've got 3 million subscribers. But like if you just buy yourself, <laughs> you just... Eating. I've never been, I've always been very comfortable eating by myself though in a, in a like I quite like eat, eating at a restaurant by myself. Oh, I don't. No? Nah, like I, I went to um Slovakia recently and I'd stay in a hotel the night before cuz it was like a early doors flight. And I remember I went down to get some food for dinner and I ate as fast as possible to get back to my room so I'm just like I'm just sat in this sat by myself just scrambling no down. room service, no? Going to get it all, got got it ordered to you. I never ever ordered room service. No? Huh? No, I don't want my room stinking of food, you know what I mean? I'm, I, I'm with you there. Yeah. I, I don't really like that. I, I did when I went, you know, if you go on like a, when I was younger, went on holiday, la, probably the last holiday I had with my family. Yeah. It was like an all-inclusive thing and you could get room service, which I thought was a mad idea because like you could, I could really abuse that. Right? <laughs> it's exactly like, you fucking send me the whole menu, mate. Um, but you know, I mean, I, I get you. It's, you don't really want to eat in your room, especially your hotel rooms are small. They're going to conserve the skin. Yeah, and the you? village hotel in Cheadle is fucking minging. That sounds like, nah, village hotel's normally good. Sh- that one's Proper shit, man. The one in Headingley is all right, or it used to be. Yeah, like the one in the one years around ago. here is in South Leeds is good, but the one next to the airport is horrendous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, the other thing that happened while I was away, Ed Sheeran in court about plagiarizing Marvin Gaye. Your mate Ed Sheeran. Yeah, <laughs> Ed Sheeran. he's uh, yeah, but I didn't realize it would be resolved this quickly because he was found. I was going to be like, oh, what do you think about it? But uh, as of this morning or last last mm-hmm. night, he's found not guilty, right? Not guilty. What like it like a legal charge? Is that how it's like? Is that how why else would you go to court? I don't know. It's like, it seems so extreme. <laughs> like a minor well, dispute. Yeah. I'd take it to court because we disagree about something. No, well, they said he pl- plagiarized that song. Was it Let's Get Is it Let's Get It On? Yeah. Um, from, from which song that he did? Uh, th- thinking Out Loud. Thinking Out Loud, that one that everyone hates. When your legs don't work like they used to before. There's some memes, oh. funny memes about that. Yeah, I don't see <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's not dwell on it, though. <laughs> but yeah, he was in the, what do you think about it? As, as the person, the only real person here that has any uh, sway when it comes to musical opinion... What did you think about that, George? What, the fact that they were trying to sue him? Well, yeah, the, what, do you think he it was, it was like guilty of plagiarism in the first place? Do I, you think that... I think uh, plagiarism is... It's tough because they do sound similar, but a lot of songs sound similar. So sound fucking identical, mate. Mm. The, co- uh, the, uh, the verse of them. Um, there's actually really an interest... I don't know if anyone watches, right? There's a channel I watch sometimes, uh, a guy called Rich Beato. Right, and he's a, a music producer. Produced loads of you probably enjoy it, right? Uh, he's an older fella, but um, yeah, he made a video about it, and he compares the two songs, and basically, he takes the Marvin Gaye song down a heart, uh, two semitones, I think, so like a full step, and <laughs> they're identical. So he says, like, well, in my opinion, yeah, he probably owes Marvin Gaye some money, but not like not all millions. the millions. But he was actually found not guilty, wasn't he? And actually, I heard, you could probably make, this, this sounds like you could make a film out of it, because apparently Ed Sheeran whipped out his three-quarter size guitar in the court and said, listen, fella, listen, judge, I'll demonstrate to you how similar chord progressions can be. Yeah. And he pl- he played like nine songs that all have the same melody. I thought, fucking right, Ed, that's pretty cool, man. I've yeah, seen him do that cool. on a radio show before. Yeah? Yeah, that, like, that blows my mind as a, a non-musical person like you two. I've got zero um, musical ability, as we all found out live. In the uh, Everyman well, Cinema in Leeds. I thought you did quite well to, to learn it to the to the extent that you did within two weeks. <laughs> yeah. I thought you did all right, mate. But uh, yeah, that, that happened while I was away. Uh, but yeah, not guilty, apparently. Entirely not guilty. He doesn't have to pay Marvin Gaye anything. That's good. I liked his film. I liked Ed Sheeran's film. Like that for me, again, as a non-musical person, I found it fascinating to see him bring uh, songs to life. Uh, another musical, uh, you know, what? <laughs> that just sounded really corny. Go on, sorry. What you <laughs> Why did that sound? You brought the song to life. No, yeah, but it's like, have you, have you ever watched, um, what's the fellow from Beatles called? George Harrison? No, other one. John Lennon. No, Ringo Starr. McCartney. <laughs> I've seen McCartney do it with a song as well that went, I can't remember which song. Anyway, next story. <laughs> but have you seen the Lewis Capaldi documentary? Yeah, yeah. No, you, you said that's really sad. Mate, so it's so sad. It. I thought it was going to be like the Ed Sheeran documentary. It's like, no, it's like yeah. the polar opposite. It's really sad, mate. It talks also, about the Ed like, Sheeran one's positive. Yeah. 
Well, not really. No? It's kind of summing up, like, I think February in 2020 or 2021 or something, like, his best mate died, his wife got cancer, and just everything happened all in one month, and he was just, yeah. Who's? Oh, Pablo. Ed Sheeran. What, he's docu- the film? I didn't even know he was married. Yeah, yeah, he's got two kids with him. <laughs> Did you watch the wrong film? The fuck did I watch? watched? The one where he's like bombing around with Benny Blanco, making music. My no, mate Benny no. Blanco? Your boy? Long time subscriber, they're Benny Blanco. They're on a Blanco. cruise ship. Like they've like took over a room in a cruise ship and they're making beats as they're like, because I think Benny Blanco won't get, on a, beats. won't get on a plane. So they have to cruise across <laughs> the Atlantic. Is he, is he scared of flying? Yeah. Motherfucker. Uh, yeah, That's why he asked you to come to LA. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You, I don't think he was going to come to fucking Morley, was he, mate? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Benny, I've got this boss studio in Morley. Do you want to come? Yeah, what's in Morley? Oh, like a fucking chicken shop. <laughs> you can get your hair cut for £3.50. That's where Josh goes. <laughs> Have you seen how many like barbers there are in Morley? Yeah, There's yeah. going to be people knocking at the door now. Anyway, what else has happened in, whilst you're away? The, uh, the final thing I had was Mr. Beast cured a bunch of deaf kids, didn't he? I don't know. Yeah, and then he got like, I say when I was away, this was literally as I was flying home, like it was like <laughs> right at the end of the trip. Uh, yeah, but then n- predictably got a bunch of grief for it because uh, people are like, oh, you're using the fact that you're curing deaf kids to get views. Didn't he cure blind people at all? Possible. I think he did like, I feel yeah. like he's done this before. Like, a- I feel like that's, if you if you complain about that though, I mean, I get it, but if, if kids live in a, a country which does not mandator- mandatorily um, cure kids like you ask nah you gotta have health insurance to give you your fucking hearing back then he's doing a good thing there isn't he oh, that's yeah. bullshit that man yeah that's the world we live in though isn't it like the people just fucking moan about everything I think I can't, can't like, believe you made this kid here again that is bastard. probably like that I didn't even warm up your fucking cold black heart watching I watched a, a kid like hear her own voice for the first time it oh, wanted those like little shorts yeah it wanted to give him the cochlear implant thing yeah and it would like Brought a tear to my eye. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen that mo- movie, The Sound of Metal? Is that the guy that goes deaf from playing drums? Yeah, Riz Ahmed. Yeah, yeah, I've not seen it, but it's supposed to be really good. It's a bit niche. I imagine it probably wouldn't appeal to many people. That's a great film, yeah. He goes deaf from uh, drumming. Uh, probably drummed a bit too hard, I don't know. But um, yeah, and it's about like he wants to kind of get his hearing back. And uh, he goes to this little commune thing where they teach deaf people that it's not, a, you know, deafness is not a disability and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And, he, and he, he gets the, the implant, he's saving for the implant. I've given away the whole plot of the film. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. And, he, and, he, does, and he, he doesn't want it, ends up taking it out and goes back to his commune, I think becomes a teacher, if I recall the end. But yeah, it's a cool film. Ah. Well, I don't need to watch it now. Thanks for that, mate. Yeah, no worries. Uh, that, that's all the shit, basically, that happened in the universe. Well, you I'm know aware. what else has happened, what? apparently, that I've missed? Um, we've got a king. We've got a king now, I'm told. You were trying to fucking kickstart me, boy. Don't, don't get me started <laughs> you, on you this, were full of, You were full of beads when you came in, but I'm, I'm told on the, the vine of grapes that we have a king. <laughs> I was busy yeah. all week and I missed it. You might have a king, son. But I'd like to <laughs> I thought, you know, like people kept saying, oh, what are you doing for, doing a coronation chicken challenge beard for the coronation? Somebody, and I got so many messages by the Did end. a sausage run for like his fingers. Yeah. <laughs> by the end, so many people said that to me. I think I mess, replied to the last person. I was like, tell you what I'm going to do for the coronation, mate. I'm going to sit in a cold dark room with no technology so I can be in not, not in any way risk exposure to anything related to the coronation. I think that I, I'm, I'm just about the memes. I'll, I'll scroll through Twitter, you know, like when it's, there's like a Range Rover leaving the church and uh, somebody's photoshopped the registration plate. It says, are you 14? And it's Prince, <laughs> Prince Andrew's <laughs> Range Rover. We're going to get in very big legal trouble at some point. The amount of people we have, uh, even though, I mean, that's is is obviously true. A super, yeah, allegedly. Have you seen allegedly the one nonsense. where someone's like edited it where the Queen's like driving a Range Rover and someone's edited it so she's like listening to Stormzy or something she pulls past. <laughs> <laughs> I Why saw one where Prince Andrew's in church and there's like a, he's got like a crest on his shoulder and in the middle of the picture, I don't know what was supposed to be in it before, but there's now one of, uh, it, was a, it was the guy that had the island. Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein, Jeffrey yeah. Epstein. Like, man. Oh, God. Yeah. Internet's undefeated. The, the only thing I did see, just by complete chance, was, uh, I didn't realise it was a weekend long thing. I thought it was just like, a, they do that on Saturday and then it's over. Uh, but there was some kind of, I, I hesitate to say gig, concert last night to commemorate it, right? And I was just flicking through TV, probably waiting for Match of the Day 2 to come on. And uh, saw Lionel Richie performing. But Is it he was still like, alive? I, but the weirdest thing was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's still alive. It looks great as well. But like, I, 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 w- I wasn't really, you know, when you're not really paying attention, you scroll through the channels yeah, yeah. and it just kind of, picture in picture comes on. And I'm like, the fuck? This is somebody doing Lionel Richie, but this isn't Lionel Richie. And so I, oh, as I pressed it, I'm like, 
shit, it's Lionel Richie, but it sounded like a pub singer doing Lionel Richie. He's like, come on, oh, not long, yeah, come on. And like, it was a parody of his own song. I'm like, well, I, but I guess as people get older, their the voice kind of goes a bit right. They can't quite hit those notes. So they just make it a bit of a performance. Uh, yes, that's the only thing I saw is Lionel Richie making a bit of a fool of himself. Breaking news though, from the Coronation Weekend, um, we have it on good authority from a screenshot from our group chat that Tory Mike <laughs> attended, <laughs> genuinely, this is not even a joke, Tory Mike attended a garden party in Liverpool. Can you believe that in Liverpool of all the cities, there was people <laughs> in the streets? You know, I'm thinking, have we heard from him since then? Because we should probably check if he's all right. Because <laughs> if like, anyone walked past that, it could well have, there could have been some violence that happened. We never, well. Looked like he had some nice buns, though. I don't know if, it, I don't know if Mike's mum made some, uh, some <laughs> nice mum's buns. Nice buns. <laughs> Coronation buns with like a, a icing Prince Charles on top or something. I can see Mrs. Beard getting behind a... Uh, yeah, didn't you see? She sent me a message saying like, Adam, we now have a king. So I just sent her a, a picture back of me sleeping with the Nathan's trophy saying, <laughs> there's only one king, babe. <laughs> yes, but she, 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 I don't know what she... It's weird because she's just, well, let's not get into politics, right? But she's not the kind of person you would assume. She's not what you would call a royalist. Right. I think she maybe just, she loves a drink, right? I know lots of people, <laughs> lots of her friends were having parties. So pims she's in the garden. No, nah, pims. Pims is. No, nah, that's a bit fruity for Mrs. Beers, isn't it? She'd have been drinking like vodka, <laughs> vodka and Vimto or something, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, there was a, I think there's a, there's a king now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, well, uh, how was the, the trip um, to Canada? What was, went down in the world of, uh, of in Canada. Canada? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was all right, man. What about yeah. the trip out? Did you, did, no, uh, drama nah, no dramas, man. It was, it was smooth, schmoove. Uh, obviously, I had to go down Heathrow, which is never fun. <laughs> Wait, he sent a thing in the group chat, did he? Because he flies first. But then he's like... Business class. It's like, I've had to fly fucking poverty. <laughs> and his, his head's it's like... He's too, I have to find the picture. He's doing like a I've selfie. Got it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the, the no the window. Bulkhead. <laughs> yeah. So enjoying the view here. There's no window. <laughs> um, yeah, but the worst part about that was like... I, it's, I, obviously, when you go down to, like from Manchester to Heathrow... Even if you get business class, there's not, there's not, there's nothing special about it. You just get on first, right? But I don't know what it was. Maybe there's none left, right? I didn't realize the first. It didn't matter, right? But I had a, an economy ticket there. But like, it was literally the last seat on the plane. And I was <laughs> in the like, back right corner. in the corner, in the back, yeah. Um. So yeah, that was. Uh, it was a bit of a weird experience, like you know, flying without being able to see anything. Yeah, I bet. I didn't really mind. But a, a guy next to me actually started talking to me, which I never really enjoy. But um, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's like. I'm getting a bit claustrophobic here. I'm thinking, fuck, don't ask me for a hug, mate. Or like, I'm, not, I'm not talking you through this. I'm sure, that'd make it worse. But like, he's like, yeah, I can't, I'm not, I'm not used to not seeing. And I'm thinking, well, you're like on the aisle, so you can kind of, you must be able to see out like one of the, a bit of one of the windows. I'm like right in the corner, I can see shit. Um, <laughs> so it's a bit of an odd experience, but like being on a fairground ride or something, because you know, it was all the movement. You don't really expect when landing happens, you're not really braced for it. Oh, um, I hate flying me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I don't really mind it. Like, because I think like if it crashes, you, it's going to be a really quick death, isn't it? Pretty but much. that's not what you want to think about when you're flying, is it? I don't really mind. Like, if I if I go that way, I go that way. <laughs> nice know. view. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 you've got a long time to think about it, though, haven't you? I suppose. Like, depending on what happens. Like, if the, both the engines fail uh, 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 <laughs> at high talk. altitude. I, mean, I used to be so scared of flying when I was younger. That they, used to, they used to give me diazepam to get on the plane. That's how <laughs> fucking scared I was. <laughs> And I'm still like tripping out now. I'm like sweating. I look at my heart rate on the thing. It's like 150 beats. I'm just holding on, like closing my eyes. Come on, please don't crash. Please don't crash. I'll tell you what, it's a bit terrifying. It's like, you're, you're the person that claps when they land the plane. Aren't I you? don't clap. I'm just like, I put my your best thing, best invention for people that are scared of flying is um, noise cancelling headphones and sick bags. Because like you, you, it, there's so much fucking weird noises that goes on. And like in my head, I'm going, is that like a bolt that's come loose? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I think people stress by it too much. So, cause I've got a mate who's a pilot, right? And he's like, is, even if both engines fail at like a peak altitude, if you're high enough up, it's not the end of the world. It's like, you're probably going to be at a glide, unless you're right over the Atlantic or whatever, you're going to be at a probably glide to like an airport, right? It's not just going to stall. And like you've fallen out there, it's not like a helicopter, right? You've fallen out of the yeah. sky. You're probably going to be able to try and find somewhere you can bang it. But I'll tell you what was pretty terrifying. It's like flying over bits of Greenland, right? You know, like or Greenland. Um, did I see that picture of the mountains? You just for two hours, you, you know, because I've never really, when I've been to Canada before, I've always been to like the East Coast, right? Yeah. Toronto, Montreal, all that. And uh, you, for there, you just go over the Atlantic, right? But I guess because Calgary is further west, you have to go more northerly. Right, yeah. so you're kind of going over bits of like what's essentially the Arctic, right? Um, 
And like, you just see mountains for like two hours. Yeah. And I was thinking like, shit, if this went down here and you survived, <laughs> I'd be in every motherfucker on this plane. You know what I mean? It'd be like a movie alive, you know, that f- with the football rugby team. It'd be like went the down Reven- in the Andes. It'd be like the Revenant one here where he's like, his beers just go covered in snow and ice. Like, you know what I'm like with the cold? I'd, be, I would, I'd probably last 20 minutes. I'd be like, I'm out. I'm like, I can't deal with this. Drown myself. It's like an ice, uh, one of those ice lake thingies. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, like the trip was cool. Went without without any real uh, event. Watched some terrible films. You see Megan, that uh, it's about like a, an animatronic doll, AI doll. It's I've, like a horror I've seen film. That. Yeah, it's uh-huh. fucking terrible. I thought you were gonna say like Mega Shark or whatever. Um, it's like it's like no. a comedy that. Yeah, it's that bad, right? But it's not a horror comedy. It's like it's supposed to be just a horror. Yeah, it's about like a <laughs> the, this toy company, right? They're trying to. Uh, break the market with a new toy, right? And they've developed this AI, you know, learning computer, which they put into like this latex doll thing. So it might not be latex, just, you know, like a rubber, it's supposed to look human, right? Kind of. And uh, obviously like Terminator, Rise of the Machines, she, the, this thing becomes sentient. and starts trying to kill fools. I think kills the neighbor's dog. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's a really bad film. Um, watch the new Top Gun. Is it any uh, good? Which was not equally bad, but it's not very good. Um, I mean, all like all the action set pieces are good naturally, but um, I watched um when I flew to where, Austria, I went. To, I did five like five countries in two days or something. Um, I watched the McGregor film again. You know, the, have you seen that Notorious? No, you have not seen it. No, I, mean, I never will. Why? It's a pretty good. I, I like documentaries. Man. No, I can't a, watch films. He's a fool, isn't it? Am I in it? Isn't it? You know, his mate that looks a bit like me. No. Like mashed up nose. No. Not in it. No. Oh, he's not in it. I thought no. they were like. Buzz and Buddies. I thought they'd known each other since they were like four or something. They're always <laughs> together. No, <laughs> damn. <laughs> what else happened on the trip then? Like, what 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 uh, challenges just did we take on? Mostly just just eating, mate. Mostly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and just masturbating in a hotel room. Is that it? No, come on, man. I'm 37. I'm not the energy for that shit. <laughs> um, yeah, like, what you want me to tell me? Tell you specifically what I did. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like, well, I went to... Uh, well, only about four people listen to this podcast. <laughs> not like spoil it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, good point, yeah. Um, I went, well, day one, I got... I, went, I was mostly around, like, Cal... I stayed in Calgary, right? Uh, Alberta. And uh, I, the reason for that is that that's about three hours away from Edmonton, right? So there's two fairly large cities. And then for about 12 hours either side, there's nothing, right? Um... But there's a decent amount of food channels around there. So, I, but day one, because obviously adjusting at the time, I woke up at like five a.m. So I thought I'll drive to Edmonton for the first day. Did a pho challenge, noodle soup. Yeah, that's quite funny because I'd got the rules wrong. Um, I won't say what because that will kind of wreck it a bit. But uh, that one of the rules in particular I didn't know in advance, uh, which means that I'm, the food challenge ends up being like way harder than it should have been. Um, but that's that was all right. Um, then yeah, I did like the majority of it's burgers. Which is good, but slightly different, uh, but like the, the, I think there was some funny like. Uh, is that it then for the Canada trip? I, oh, I did. I told you in the in the chat. The um, I did. I did get a second stage security grilling on the flight. I just remembered second stage security. Yeah, grilling. you know when you go when you go there. I told you last time about when I was in the uh, wherever. America. Where you went to Florida. Florida. California. Canada. California, oh. and then <laughs> same, same same. Could be yeah. Um, same country. Um, no, I went to. Uh, yeah, and I got, the guy was like, we got a pattern emerging here, sir. <laughs> and he said to me, he was like, yeah. you could be in stage two. And I'm like, well, fucking hell, what's stage two? I don't remember him saying that, but yeah. yeah. He said, and he's like, stage two is me and one other guy asking you questions. But no, actually this time, one of the reasons actually I thought I'll go to Canada is because I knew it was likely I'd be going back to uh, America in end of June, July, if for no other reason than the Nathan's after party. I don't, I don't know if I'm competing, right? But like, I'm definitely going to get pissed. And to watch the contest, if nothing else. Um, so I thought, I don't really want to go, you know, many times in between now and then. So I thought, go to Canada, right? So I went there and like Calgary Airport, it's mad, it's like, it's big, right? A bit, probably not dissimilar from Manchester, but it feels like empty. There's nobody, it's not a, a busy airport. It certainly wasn't when I was there. So I'm going through and I'm like, oh, this is sweet, you know? Like there's, it's not like in uh, flying into LA where there's like a 2,000 person queue. Yeah. There's like, five people in front of me and, and it, it, it wasn't like a desk there's just a guy there and he happens to be English actually English dude right he's like you're right what are you doing in we didn't say you're right he <laughs> kind of blended in a bit more culture he's like hi there what are you doing in uh, Calgary kind of thing I said oh I just went full on I said uh, I, I make it's going to sound a bit weird mate but I, I make uh, YouTube videos for a living I kind of I, t- I told a bit of a white line I said uh, I do kind of like travel videos just because it takes less explaining it sounds a bit more normal doesn't it than I feel myself eating food. Yeah. 
so I said, I'm just over here just to film some videos. He's like, ah, right, so it's for work. I was like, it is for work, yeah, but just to set your mind at ease because, you know, I go through this quite a lot. I've got an ETA, which is like the Canadian version of the ESTA visa waiver. I said, I'm not paid by any Canadian entity. I just make money from, uh, you know, ad revenue that I get on YouTube videos, which is paid by a British entity. Um, so, you know, that's why I'm here. He's like, what's in Calgary then? I was like, don't know, I've never been before. <laughs> Which admittedly, I probably was a bit inflammatory, but um, he said that, I mean, like, why are you here? Do you know anyone here? I'm like, no, nah, I don't know anyone here. So I'm just, I'm literally just here to explore, you know, go to some restaurants and film, film what I do. And that's, that's it. So think of it as like a vacation, but I'm taking a camera around and he's like, all right, all right. And he just scribbles on this piece of paper. I thought that was it. I thought, ah, oh, cool. And that's it. So I get my case, case comes off pretty quick and then I'm about to leave. And unlike most airports I've been to, you have to hand them this piece of paper to get out. Right. Right. After you've got your case. So I handed it to him and he's like, you got to go down there, sir. And I looked down this like tunnel. It says like, it's something like second state security check or secondary uh, immigration or something like that. And I'm like, fuck, you know. His ass is like this. I was like, like <laughs> but uh, at the end, I see this guy and he's just behind a desk. So I'm thinking, just go to the desk. And that, because the first guy that I spoke to didn't have a desk, he was just at the end of a queue with a pen. I thought, oh, maybe I'm just going to go to this desk and he's going to ask me a couple more questions or same shit and I'm going to leave. So I get there, I give him my passport. He takes my passport and he's like, right, take a seat, sir. Somebody's going to call your name in a second. And a second turned into like 45 minutes. Whoa. So I got, which was no big deal because the longer you stay up, the better, right? Really to uh, acclimate to the time difference and whatever. But any, so anyone, so anyway, somebody calls my name after like 45 minutes. I take you into like a little room. And they just start over again. They're like, so what's your, what's your purpose for visit? So I explained again. I said, yeah, film videos. He's like, what kind of videos? I was like, well, I better be fully truthful. I said, well, it's going to sound a bit odd, but, you know, I film eating videos. I film myself eating, which I realize sounds weird, but uh, people, uh, you know, people like watching it. He's like, eating? You film yourself eating? What do you mean, like, eating? I mean, eating. I'm like, you get your phone out. You, what, in the di- end? You fucking dinosaur. <laughs> what, so in the end, I was like, just does that have Google? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, if you just type in my name, my real name, you'll just see what I do. It's probably the easiest way to do this. I don't need, you don't need to take my word for it. Just look at what I do. Yeah. And he's like, okay, how, how much, how much, how much money do you have? I'm like, like what on me? He's like, yeah, I'm like uh, about 300 Canadian. He's like, well, that, is that going to last you trip here for 17 years? I'm like, no, but I have bank cards. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't carry like fucking two grand, 2000 Canadian dollars. I, I'm never going to use it again. Right. Um, He's like, so we need to prove solvency. So I was like, can I just show you my bank then? So he's like, yeah. So I just showed him my, my bank account. He's like, oh, okay. He said, all right, that's fine. Um, there's your, and he gave me this little yellow card. He said, that's like your key to get out. Like I'm in fucking Nightmare. You remember that show, Nightmare? <laughs> with, 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 what was he called? I forgot his name. But he used to wear like a VR helmet and they had to make him stand like side. Isn't right? And like this old, uh, you're too young, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, it was like an old TV show. It was like an RPG, right? Yeah. Like, uh, but on TV. Anyway. The, fun, this is, the reason I'm telling the story is the funny thing was, so I'm, I go to the guy at the front desk, which is a different desk, right? And they let you out of these like, you know, push doors. Um, so I'm like, uh, excuse me, but I've, I've been told to give you this uh, card to get out. He's like, no way. He's like, Beard, what are you <laughs> doing here, man? And I'm like, <laughs> Try to convince your mate over there. I'm not fucking people trafficking. <laughs> he turns around. He's like, ah, don't worry about him. Don't worry about. Him. So what? You you filming videos? I was like, yeah, that's why why I'm here. You could have done with a job in there, mate. Why the fuck are you on this job? <laughs> the funniest part is as well. He's like, he's like, can I get a picture? And I'm like, you you set the rules, but there's a sign there that says no pictures, <laughs> <laughs> like no photography. He's like, ah, yeah, don't worry about it. He's taking a picture. I'm like, all right, fucking one rule for one. Rule. But I was like, oh, it's nice to meet you, mate. He's like, hey, so where are you going? I'm like, ah, oh, Calgary, Edmonton. He's like, ah, cool. Do you know where you're going to be on what day is? I'm like, I, I don't really, mate, but, uh, That's yeah. that one third stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were a plan. <laughs> like, yeah, enjoy your trip. I'm thinking like, shit, if I had cameras following me around, do you get some good stuff? Because- that was the what, what, that was what that. made that funny is like the fact that this guy the one guy working there actually knew what I did was the guy that you see the title card yeah I almost got arrested in Canada <laughs> I almost got deported from Canada <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was that was funny that was really the only eventful thing but like I think maybe that will probably happen when I go back to America I don't mind it I expect the questions but it's, the worst part is that like, you know when when 
you got to explain they don't really listen. You would yeah. think that people un- would kind of understand the nature of it. And like they're, they're pretty mean as well, aren't they? Like it's supposed to be on purpose, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like when I pretend to be grumpy on this podcast, they're like... I pretend to be they, grumpy. <laughs> I feel like they go home, they, they, they hate themselves for being mean to people all day. Or maybe they love it, I don't know. I reckon they do. I reckon they're like, it's a power trip. Yeah, like, like they'll, be like, they'll, they'll be wanking themselves off when they get home. Why does it always come down to wanking with you? Like, <laughs> um, they will be, they'll be buzzing. Is yeah, he in that we toilet told like them. three times a day? I bet he is. <laughs> Why? Why is I'm he, not in his I'm office? Wanking. On calls a lot in his office. Yeah, right. Mm. And but yeah, that was it. I, I'm going to throw out a spoiler alert because I have on good authority that on May first, <laughs> right, <laughs> you be the public house uh, food challenge. Lad, don't be giving that away. The, the, that's the that's the f- that man. That was so brutal. <laughs> <laughs> because Silverback 0420 got a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> of your logo beard meets food versus public house like we'll put it on screen those that listen not even small to watch it? This, it takes up the full half of his arm yeah um, that's what they that's what they invented those lasers silver that back, tattoos for you're, you're mad mate he's like, such a nice guy uh, the, well. the caption had to do something to remember my visit from beard meets food and then hashtag good things happen in public this was not a good thing for you mate like you've got a beard meets food tattoo that was nuts mate I know it's, it's mad he was such a nice fellow as well uh, but that challenge was absolutely brutal. Hardest I've done in like recent memory. Would you be like, is that actually, I don't want to spoil it, right? But that video is good because I was going to quit. Like I'm, I actually <laughs> say, the mute in the edit, right? The music stops. <laughs> I'm playing like a bit of funk, like, dun, 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 I'm like, oh man, I can't, I can't, I can't, right? And the guy's like, everyone's just looking at me, you know, expect like, what do you mean you can't? Like, come on, come on. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can't, man. I can't eat anymore. He's like, we believe in you. And then the like the, uh, lady behind the bar was like, you got this, man. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think I do got this. But then uh, I put some uh, in the edit, like some dramatic kind of orchestral warm music. That kind of music starts. And I was like, right, fuck it. I brought some spare undies. Well, Mrs. Beards, pack me some spare undies. What's the point in having them if you're not going to use them? If I shoot my pants, I shoot my pants. And uh, I shoot my pants, actually. But like, <laughs> but I won. So it, it was one of those where I was like, oh, fuck it. You know, I won. But it was that was rough, man. It was like, it was six pounds of beef before all the rest of the stuff. It's like a it's like a giant burger, right? Sandwich between three 10 inch fucking deep pan pizzas, which are covered in things that are, they're supposed to taste like Big Macs, right? These pizzas. And then it's like, I don't know, 40 slices of bacon on, 40 slices of cheese. And I'm just like, oh my days. Like at the end, I thought I was like, I was close to death. It felt like I was close to death. Uh. But uh, I, it wasn't death. It was just that I needed to poo. <laughs> yeah. Drink copious amounts of water for the yeah. next four days. Didn't quite make it to the toilet in time. You know when you shit yourself, how yeah. much shit comes out? Like we're at a oh, full not shit. much. No, no, it wasn't because like, I feel like if I turn that, t- if I open that tap, I won't be able to close it again. So you must have some good control. No, of the old you know, I just think, oh well, a bit's come out now. I might as well let the floodgates open. I'm still trying to get to the toilet, man. Um, but like a little bit comes out, right? And then like I, I managed to make it to the toilet because I can just imagine like like I've got a, a little humor at home, and then when she shits, the nappy goes like, <laughs> ow, and I'm like, have you shit? She's like, no. I'm like, yeah, what you say to you, like your three-year-old kid. <laughs> I mean, shit. Have you um, pooed? No. There's like a full sweet can't come out. Well, first time in a while, though. Yeah? Been a, last time I think it was like, uh, that, that must be something about Canada, because the last time was in Canada, wasn't it? So a little bit of poo comes out. Then what do you have to go like rinse your ass it, at what, sink? I need to know like the logistics. Well, no, you know, there's no time for rinsing. You just get to the toilet, the rest comes out. You have a wipe, clean up as best you can. <laughs> how you t- <laughs> how your pants in the, uh, in the, in the, the, uh, the, the rubbish bin. Yeah. Or the trash can, and uh, hope nobody discovers them. Uh, that was there, you know. Hopefully, it's like a, a I don't know, like an outsourced cleaning service. They don't know who you are, um, and yeah, that's you. That's it. You kind of like you. You're not trust me, man. When you've eaten that much food, if you happen to shit your pants a bit, you're not that concerned about it. <laughs> Especially when you've done it as many times as I have. <laughs> Happens, man. Comes with the territory. But yeah, that was, I think people enjoy that video because, it, especially the people that are like, oh man, that's too easy for you. Can't you do something hard? I'm like, well, like there are a finite amount of really, the, the challenges that I should find difficult out there. So yeah, man, that was, that was, it's brutal. Well, um, moving on from your trip trip to Canada, we, uh, that, which is quite, uh, cool. well, we can come back to it, but no, I wanted no, to do a little section in between because we, um, you, which I regret, 
said in one of the previous podcasts, oh yeah, send pictures of your beards in and we'll review them, which I said at the time would be a terrible idea because like, like we would need a fucking DMs full of blokes with hairy faces. You, were you making out that we get loads of weird DMs? as well, like how, how, um, how proud, proud people are of their beards. No, why is it weird? I don't know, like, it, just like you've got a beard. Yeah. But like... Because they look boss laugh. But anyway, and I said, I did, I did say, we're going to do with dicks in the DMs. <laughs> so an honourable mention to... Uh, Oh, you can't show his dick on screen, man. Why? You're gonna get well because of you, well, luckily I'm not affiliated with this. I'm affiliated with the brand, but I don't own it. So, like, if you get this channel cancelled on YouTube, it doesn't affect my channel. All right, we'll put it on screen. But Hunter <laughs> Obviously, Rozak sent a picture of his, um, of don't his dick to in a top hat. Well, fair cop. I mean, like, that's girthy, that man. It's like one of those fucking things you have your whole suspension bridges I, I on. There's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of irony there because he's circumcised and then put a hat on it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I get it. Yeah, I should stop staring at it, but it's like an impressive dick. You see it? No, I'm good. I've seen it. It's a tiny dick. It reminds me of mine, but like mine's not as big. Black and white I'm, as well. Because I'm circumcised. The what? dick's not black and white. The picture's black and white. It's like moody. It's like arty. I feel like stop showing it to me. All right, I, I, we've looked at it long enough now. So anyway, um, yeah, we uh, <laughs> we got a dick dick pic. First one. Do you think it's stock or do you think it is actually his penis? I don't I, know. It's, I think it's stock. They've put a smiley face yeah. on it. And stuff. I want it, it to be his real. actual penis though. Doesn't look Google, real. No, it looks real as in it's an actual picture, but it's George, not Google, the guy that's... Google <laughs> like it's an AI dick. Google, <laughs> Google dick with a top hat and a smiley face and arms. No, don't I'm Google good, it. I'm don't good, Google it. No, I'm good, mate. You're going to destroy... <laughs> it's okay. Don't, don't on your laptop, don't on the communal get your media uh, Mac. Uh, so yeah, anyway, we've uh, we've got some beards to... Re- well, you've got beards to review. All um, right, cool. Right. I, I've, I can't really pass comment, can Obviously, I? obviously not, yeah. Uh, so the first one is from um, Gavlar Hook. Uh, here's a beard for Adam to review... Uh, penis available on request. No thanks. <laughs> Is that Ga- what it says? No thanks, Gavlar. Banter. Uh, Gavlar Hook. It sounds like he... he, he any relation to Captain? Captain Hook? Um, <laughs> what a shit joke. <laughs> <laughs> like, he could, that could be a pirate name, couldn't it? Gavlar. I, I don't know. Could be. Uh, yeah, so we're going to rate it out of like 10 or what? Yeah, I don't know. What's the, what's the parameters? It's got to be like, I guess, um, girth, length, a bit, well, a bit like a dick rate, let's, I guess. Not get, let's not get too t- too deep into it. And then, Gav- out, and then out of ten, shut the fuck up. Like Gavlar, I like this beard, right? Because um, it's uh, it's neat, right? Which is not something you can say about my beard. It's not the biggest beard on planet Earth. So you, if we're standing next to each other in the bar, or we, if we're in a bar in Leeds, right, and you catch my eye across the bar, you're gonna you're gonna get that sheepish look that be- people with beard envy get. It's it's a very unique experience. It's hard to explain to people without beards. But you see somebody with a beard bigger than you in a bar. There's like inherently you feel like you're not the alpha male in the uh, uh, in in the in the room anymore, right? Because I know because I've had that myself. It's very rare. See, you remember the the, the cat, guy, uh, um, what's his name again? Beard meets beard, beards. Beard meets beards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's got an absolute unit of a beard, right? And I was like, oh, fucking hell. But yeah, uh, Gav, like yours, is, it's neat and tidy, so I respect that. The, the moustache is, uh, it's not to my taste, because I like quite a long moustache, but it suits your face, and it suits the overall image of the beard. It's quite a neat, trimmed back tash. Tash is not very long. And I like the way that it kind of fades into, quite naturally, into the the kind of the fade that you've got going on with your hair. So I'm going to give that beard a... Uh, I'm not going to bullshit. I'm going to give it a seven out of ten. Seven out of ten yeah. from the hairy man himself. It's a good beard, that yeah. I'd see that in that, in public, and I'd think, yeah, he took some effort with that beard, but not too much effort. He's not like straightened out and all that nonsense. Uh, so the next one is from um, Steph Stay Slim. I recognise uh, that. I think Steph says Stay Slim has messaged me maybe on Instagram or commented a few times. He said, uh, "Here is a picture of the beard. Great idea. <laughs> By the way, I'm the one on the left. The one on the right is my son." <laughs> you mean the younger human well, without a beard? <laughs> there you go. All right, right here we go. Uh, well, that's a bit. Fun. Can, oh, there we go. I'm zooming in now. Nice. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm the one on the left. Did it just like to, yeah, yeah. to clarify? I'm not the clean shaven person. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a cool bit. I like. I always like beards with uh, in bald headed men um, you- because it. I think it's, it's a think, cool look. It's, you know, I, it's I, think, I think Steph Stay Slim's got a cooking channel on YouTube, a rather successful one. I was going to say, it looks a bit like Binging with Babish, it looks right? exactly like Binging with Babish. I don't know about exactly like, but like, uh, like he's a, he's a slightly less well-nourished twin. Um, <laughs> 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 that's not an insult. You know, uh, saying Slim? That's his name? Well, I get it, yeah. Anyway. Um, 
Yeah, I like sh- shut up. We're doing the beard critique, but it always looks good in that. It, it gives that kind of Kratos feel. I'm not much of a gamer, but uh, you know, God of War is quite a popular game, yeah. isn't it? Um, it's got some real meat to it. This beard, it feels like it's a naturally girthy beard. I bet it's one that takes a lot of trimming. Uh, Tash is a bit more to my liking. It's quite long, but it's not overly long like mine. So you could probably eat with eat yogurt with this mustache without too much fear of making a mess of yourself. I think the uh, the the transition into the into the burns. Maybe it's a bit short there. I think um, I like the the bit the grey coming through gives it character. I like that because it's not like like mine's got little bits of grey and white sticking all over. This has got a nice patch of grey in the middle, almost like it's intentional. But I feel I like it's not. I, I can't believe how um, much work's going. Into, well, these people, people, people I'm driving th- in the cars now. I just think there's a tree there. I'm just gonna fucking stick it. <laughs> like, if, I, if I were driving and I'm listening to this, I'd be like, "Fuck this podcast." <laughs> these people would be nice enough not only to listen to this fucking shit show, but to subject <laughs> Have themselves. You seen how the energy changes? Yeah. Like energy is not, never destroyed. It's just it's just transferred. <laughs> Steph, Steph stay slim. Uh, I'm going to give this one for different reasons. It's neat, again, it's neat and tidy. I'm going to give this a seven out of ten as well. Um, Fucking, does that rate my takeaway? This kind of yeah. No, because right. he gives out ten out of ten all the time. <laughs> Next one is from my beard struggle. Ooh, that implies that he's having difficulty growing the beard. I think his, his name is Michael. Rate my beard, Michael. Growing it for two years. He fucking struggling. He, oh, I feel like he's going to have a good one. He oh, looks, this is a proper beard, this la. He looks like one of them dolls. You know remember them dolls? <laughs> the gnomes? Yeah. Like the troll doll. It looks like a troll doll. <laughs> <laughs> in a good way, not in a bad way. Like, but like no, the beard's is, like, it's got that- um, what's, what's the guy's look, name? It looks like a garden gnome, I my, think. My beard is- That's what we just said, George. <laughs> no, the fuck keep up. The, the shape of the beard's like perfect, you know, yeah. into, into the peak at the bottom. Is that yeah. what you'd call it? Uh, no, because um, <laughs> a peak would be at the top, wouldn't it? Um, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a bearded, my bearded struggles, the username, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. I like this. Again, it's got that, he's got a, not a bald head, but a shaven head. Always compliments a beard. It's a nice full beard. Uh, it's about, I would say it's about the same length as mine, only he doesn't tie it up. Despite the fact that it does look to me like it's gone terminal. Uh, whenever I say gone terminal, people are like, <gasps> what do you mean? I, I don't mean like, it's not nothing, to, nobody's dying. I just mean that like, your beard gets to a certain length, sadly, when it stops growing, right? And you can see the dead ends at the bottom. Um, but that's that's not that's not inherently a bad thing. I just tie mine up because I just don't like the way it looks, but I don't want to shorten it, right? This this folks just leaning totally into it. Um, the uh, yeah, I mean, it's well. The only thing, the only reason I want to deduct the points here is for personal preference, really, because it's that looks like a straightened beard to me. And I always think that beards look better when they've got a bit of uh, a bit of chaos going on, you know, they're kind of like curly and uh, they look a bit wild. This looks a bit too kempt for my liking, but it's certainly got, it's got good lengths, but probably about the length of mine. Uh, the, I, I love the transition. It's like a Fu Manchu, you know, like the tash goes into the beard, super nice. I think it's longer than yours, me. No, it's, it's not. I can tell by looking at it. <laughs> it's, it's like, it he ties his, his, I think it's a better beard than mine. I will say that. Um, but uh, I'm going to give it, I'm going to have to give it an eight because it's longer than the other two. The only reason it's not higher than that is the straight thing. Um, but again, that's personal preference. It's fucking great beard, that, mate. Yeah. Well, in Michael, you're top of the leaderboard. Love it, yeah. Can, we should we do get, a leaderboard, yeah? A bearded leaderboard. Please don't. I don't ever want to do this again. <laughs> like, this is the last time we do beard rates. Oh, there's not more. Come on. Yeah, there's loads. So, oh, come on. Like, I th- can we not leave him for another week? Uh, I feel like doing like more than one is going to make people want to, like you said, crash their car into a tree. <laughs> oh, <you've, laughs> all right, it's three more. Do these, then we'll never do this again. Can't we just leave them to next week? All right. We're doing two, epi- two all episodes All right, we'll leave, we'll leave these to next week. Yeah. Uh, those that have sent them, we, we have saved Don't worry. Them. We're, we're gonna, if you've sent us, a, you will get a beard rate and you're just going to have to wait another week for it. All right, so we've looked at some beards and willies. Um, we are now <laughs> going to do the um, what would normally be a Patreon-only section. We're going to try and offer a bit more value in the Patreon community because that's the only way that we can keep this ship afloat, which is currently sinking <laughs> dramatically. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to do more. But this is a, a, an overrated and underrated. Do we have a jingle? This. We don't have a jingle at the Can moment. Can you sing one? Fucking hell, George. Make one up, Adam. Go on, on the spot. Oh, man. Um, overrated, underrated is yeah. what it's called. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't, man. I can't, like, I, I can't, I can't, I can't look at these conditions. Stack, I if I had the my guitar, I, could, I think I could because I yeah. could like, feel a bit of melody and I'd like, jam you know, out. You know, yeah, George knows I'm a proper musician, so like, I got have, <laughs> have that inspiration. All right, no I, jingle. I don't know. <laughs> Go on, George, lay it on us. Okay, so. Overrated, underrated, or perfectly rated? Bank holidays. Uh, well, I mean, 
think <laughs> we're, we're self-employed. I don't yeah, what the fuck is a bank holiday. You know what I mean? Like somebody said to me the other day, what are you doing for bank holiday? I was like, what the fuck's a bank holiday? Um, overrated. Overrated. I'm, I'm saying we're, we're all we're all self-employed. What's aren't the we? basis on that? I, I get the I'm feeling. Being overrated. Yeah, we're gonna be. So we, we should probably you should answer that, George, because you're an employee. So like to us, bank holidays doesn't mean anything. It's bank holiday today. The poor fuck is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Normally, I think. It's, do you mean the culture around bank holidays, i.e., that people go out and get pissed far more like loosely on a Sunday? Well, so so like people get really excited for, and plan things for bank holidays, and it's like, does it live up to the expectations? It's a bit like. Not the same as Christmas, but like everyone like hypes. Yeah, I mean, something. like I drove past the pub yesterday and people were like going to town. Yeah. And I was like, fair cops, sun's out. It's probably Aussie State year that we've had. People are going, getting on it and there's no work tomorrow. So I was like... Maybe they're perfectly rated because yeah. I feel like it, it's nice that any time that you get off work, which is paid essentially, is good for... Morale. Yeah, for, for people, the majority of the country are, are employees of a, a larger business to get time off. Or they, but they, they don't do that. Because I just I went to McDonald's this morning to get a coffee. I used to work for a bank. We have to fucking work bank holidays. <laughs> like, did they not get the, the memo? It's called a bank holiday. But um, People need them Big Macs, though, when they've got hangover. Maybe they get double time. What, like eight in the morning? Um, they don't, but you don't, though, do you? Not always. You, uh, but anyway, I'd, let's say perfectly right, because I know people enjoy them and I don't want to come across as what a do you think, George? grumpy bastard. Uh... I think perfectly rated as well. Football <laughs> or soccer. Underrated. Greatest sport in the world. Underrated, wow. Yeah, of course. I it's think very it's highly pro- rated though. Uh, yeah, but still underrated because it is the greatest sport that's ever been invented. The simplicity it? of it, the, yeah. Or well, what's better than it? Well, Don't make me throw this cup at you. I don't know. You don't like know. football, so I didn't expect this from you, George. Yeah, I think it's just, I think... It's not my cup of tea. I'm, I'm, I think it's a bit overrated. You like your sports, don't you, that involve very little skill and just like all out Violence. brute force. You sound like a missus. There's like so much <laughs> skill involved <laughs> in fighting. He's trying to wind you up because it's fun. Uh, no, but I I love the fact that um, football is like that universal. All you need is a ball. Yeah. And it doesn't even have to be a ball. I remember like at school, like I went to a, a pretty deprived school. I remember playing, uh, kicking a can around and setting goals up. You know, you set goals up with like your, your jackets or whatever, booting a can around because we didn't have a ball. Probably been confiscated by the headmaster or whatever. Have you made this up in your mind? No, I mean, I'm genuinely <laughs> true. We used to boot a can around at, so at one point. But the school budget was probably really bad that year. I don't know. Ofsted came in the year after. We were a bit better after. But um, yeah, I, I love football. I, it's odd to me because I'm not like the most sporty bloke on planet Earth. I mean, I like sport in general, but like football, I'll watch anything. If if I don't know what the fuck's on tonight, Monday night football, it'd be like, I don't know, Leicester and Fulham. I'll probably watch it if I've got time. Yeah, I, I, I do get that. I think uh, why I don't, I mean, I've, we used to do the podcast for Leeds United when they were in the championship and I watched the, the lads disappointed for four years, three years maybe like, until they finally went up and they were like, they were elation. But for three years, I watched them absolutely depressed at the end of the season. <laughs> you, you could be seeing that again. And, and then now like, <laughs> Now we're going to see it again. You know what I mean? And it's for people to be so invested in that their lives are invested in these teams. And I get it. It's nice. A bit of a community spirit, but oh yeah, t- it's like they're, they're so invested and then they lose and now they're going to go down again and get relegated. So, there's certainly too much zealotry in football. People that can't see, you know, you see people like fighting on tubes. Like, yeah. when the, like a lot of the, you know, because a lot of teams in London, you often see like, tube fight. That's crazy to me. Like people that can't understand it's a game. Yeah. Right? And obviously you're disappointed when you see them lose and whatnot, but that's a different thing. It's how I think football, uh, in, in general, I just, I, yeah, I love it, man. I love everything about it, I think. Well, not everything about it, but... What are you saying, son? I think in terms of, like, like, the athletes, I don't think it's, like, the best sport for, like, I think... What do you mean? In what capacity? Well, well like, there's 11 players for a team. If, like, one's having a fucking bad day, but the rest are playing all right, you can get away with it. But, like, something like MMA or fighting or whatever, if you're having a bad day, you're getting sparked out. Ah, oh, right. so you pref- you you prefer as an athlete, s- it takes more singular sports. I, I get that totally. Like it's 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 a lot more. I think mental strength to do a sport, even but even like golf, like you know, you could laugh at that, but like the mental strength it yeah, takes yeah. to do a sport where it just relies on you. No excuses, right? You can't blame people. I think it's my, like when I when I flew to Austria, there was um there must have been like a, a game on or a tournament or something. But the, the Liverpool kids team were on the plane with us, like ten year old, you know, with like three coaches. And I, I, I was like thinking, I'm like, so they're all there fully kitted out, you know, in all sponsored gear and that. And I was like, this is nuts that, that, that these are like little mini athletes. What are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> what? <laughs> because not, not this most recent trip, the last trip when I was in Vegas, right? <laughs> it was when I was in Vegas, there was this 
peewee soccer team, they probably call it out there, right? They're all about 10. And they, they must have been playing some tournament because they were all decked out in like sponsored kits and whatnot. And one morning I was in the gym and they came in, they'd been loud as fucking flying around, like dangling off the machines and stuff. And I was like, I was starting, fucking, my eye was twitching, I was starting to lose my rag, right? And I just, they were kicking the ball around like in the reception area of the gym, uh, sorry, the hotel. And I've never been as tempted in my life to just fucking go fly in two footed and just take out like six of them. <laughs> 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 but I, I, I didn't, right? But I was, I was, I was this close. But um, yeah, to be fair, these were little gobshites as well, aren't playing, but. I thought like little mini athletes and these like three adults that are obviously the coaches. And it's mad to think that like one of them or a few of them could be like the future stars of Premier League, you know, you know or Liverpool. Almost certainly won't be, but yeah. <laughs> really? That's, that's like, even more That's the thing about football though, is yeah, like to, yeah. be, to be a Premier League football, you know, the criticism they get as well, or like any kind of elite, like top flight footballer, even to be like a League One player, like the, the, how good you need to be at, at, at football. Like, because so many people play it, the breadth of talent, like it's not like being a, the best eater in the world, right? Yeah. Not very few people do it, right? It yeah. still takes a lot of skill. I'm not taking anything away from, you know, Joey Jaws, Chestnut. But um, yeah, like the, you, you're never going to, like everyone can play it to some level of proficiency, which is a good thing about it, right? I mean, you keep telling me you're decent football, even though you never, you know, watch it. So like, uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know what I was around. Like, so no, yeah, I, 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 what you were saying was that like, it's brutal that all them kids will be sat there like, been little loudmouth dickheads and half, most of them will get cut. <laughs> They're going to be playing for like their own talent that's team. Do you know thing, what I mean? Like, it's, it, I, I like the fact that, you know, they, they've got all those like, uh, I look, I, that's why I think I like American sports systems. Actually, the one thing I think they have, which is way better than England and Europe and stuff, is the whole scholarship thing. You know, so like if you play uh, American football, say, yeah. you go to university, you don't you? Well. Degree. So if, if that doesn't pan out, you yeah. can still do something. And I think it's becoming a little bit more the case now in England, but they still don't have scholarships. So like if you get into football and you're like, say it's, you're a part of an academy and then you're just not good enough when you come 17, 18 and you get released, what do you do with your life? You know? Cause you know, at that point you could, okay, you could go into further education, but you've probably invested so much of your development in that. Yeah. So I think there are programs now that get kids into coaching and stuff like that. So if they can't be a player, then at least they can be a coach. And- oh, who knew it would be such a helpful podcast given this information? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? yeah. So yeah. you think it's underrated Adam <laughs> and Josh? I forgot what we were doing. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I did. Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. You I could talk next- about football all day. <laughs> go to the next one. There's people reversing out that tree to drive back into it. What <laughs> <laughs> time was it enough? I'm still conscious. Finish me off. <laughs> okay. All inclusive holidays. Uh, Ooh, it depends on the hotel, doesn't it? That does it. It's a very big variable there and where you are. I want to say overrated there, but that's because I'm a miserable bastard. <laughs> like, we went to one in Cos on the 18th first, so I did it. It was like the in between us. You shit on floor 50 euro. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Holding a dead dog that's <laughs> pulled out of a well. Yeah, fucking pissing in, uh, in the kettle. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> takes a shit in the toaster. I, like <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I just like I just don't like summer all day, so I, and that's usually the place you get them. I think, you know, I probably would love all-inclusive hotels. If, if you could just go to an all-inclusive hotel in England, like in just a, maybe one of those old kind of, uh, you know, like a Chester or like a York. Yeah. I just sit there and eat shitloads and drink shitloads all day. If that existed, I probably wouldn't mind them. But they're normally like in a, you go on, you know, somewhere on <laughs> on a beach holiday, right? And then you... We're doing, in less than a month, we're doing all-inclusive in Magaluf for four days with lads. Because it's, it's uh, Tommy's stag do that I'm in charge of. And I've been trying to find, I've genuinely been trying to find somebody that'll kidnap him or... I didn't get invited, oh, man. Do you want to come? No. Somebody dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be standing at a good hotel. Jump, jump my seat. We've actually I'll been laughing t- at you boys back in economy. Like, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> economy to Mallorca. You can't fly business class to Mallorca. Well, the bollocks of business class to Mallorca. Right there. It's oh, like flying man. skips, isn't Mallorca's it? Mallorca's a dump anyway, man. Go on, what's <laughs> right. what's, no, what's the last time I went there? Best part about it was I had those Chuckle Brothers cars. You've seen those where you pedal them. They've got cars, but you pedal them. <laughs> they had loads of that. I went there like 20 years ago. I can't, obviously, we were doing Magaluf, like BCM and the alt nightclubs and stuff. <laughs> At your age? At my age. Oh, no, yeah, it's going to be awful. Enjoy. Uh, perfectly uh, rated. Perfectly rated. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, some people love them, some people, some people hate them. It it's really expensive. depends on that. Like, yeah, it is expensive when you go abroad. Like, if you don't know what, if you're just walking down the strip, in, like I told you about the time that I nearly shit myself when I had some uh, dodgy lobster in Turkey. If I wouldn't have got that, if I'd have stayed in a hotel and just had, you know, pizza and chips. I don't know. People get food poisoning from hotels. 
Mm. I was let's just say perfectly rated because some people love them, don't they? Yeah. And they are con- they can be convenient if you don't really want to go, you know, trekking. If you went to Slovakia, for example, you don't really want to be walking the streets, do you? That'd be like, nice in Slovakia. Yeah, I'm just trying to play on a stereotype like that movie Hostel, just to be offensive but funny at the same time. Uh, that, that, that movie that Josh has not seen. <laughs> I thought I'd be like up your street though. No, it scares me. It I don't like scary after you've seen that. Yeah. yeah. Next. All right, I'll do one more. Um, seen as though it's all happened this weekend, the royal family. Oh, lad, come on. I think they're underrated, me, you know. You've obviously got a strong opinion about it, Adam. Let's have it. Can I, can I just plead the fifth? I don't want to, because like, we, this this podcast is already, as Josh has alluded to, not doing well. It's quite, quite. if we could be honest with you, it's many thousands of pounds into the red. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and so if I start r- go, going like off on the royal family, yeah, then you, you, you risk losing the uh, I think the royalists, uh, which which might form a large part of the sub-base. I don't know. So... Um, I, I, I'm not. I have nothing I positive to say about how many people actually agree on your opinion of it. Yeah, but you, I would also be surprised. I think how many people disagree and how many people cannot like when somebody yeah, expresses what an opinion. What you're trying to do? You're trying to like you're going to, try to get Paul Beard cancelled because you don't like oh, no, the monarchy. Yes, I don't care about that. I care about you, man. You're the one who spends all the money on this shit. <laughs> um, I'm, I can't. I can't say anything positive about them. So that's. So they're so overrated. At all. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, like that, that, that's the that's the best thing I could probably say about them. They're yeah. overrated. Could, I could you agree, Josh? I do now, yeah. I think all the old queenie lady put a good shift in, <laughs> but rest of them can bollocks, especially since they allegedly be nonce. Um, anyway, <laughs> so we'll finish the podcast on a, on, a, <laughs> on that. We haven't um, got a fessel. Oh, no. We don't. Oh, thank God. One of my prayers has finally been All answered. right, we'll, 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 we'll forego the festival. We'll do like five in the next uh, episode. The astute viewers would have noticed that there is a, a microphone at the end of this table and it's because we have got a recording. Mrs. Beards, there, she's been listening the whole time. You just can't see her because she's so small. <laughs> it's Has Buller. Has Buller, how's it going? What you think? Joking, there's no, there's no guest there. We've uh, we've got a guest on next week's episode, so stay tuned for that. It's, it is quite exciting, um, but we'll see how it goes. I, I feel sorry for the bloke. I'm into coming off on the second recording of the day. It can only go well. It's all right, man. You're going to make me another coffee, I assume. Yeah, yeah. Breaking beans because we can't. We literally cannot. Can we can't sell this? I mean, there's so much back that you could bury a fucking human body with it. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll get another one of those. I'll be fine, fine and dandy for uh, the the next fella coming in. <laughs> Just, I was trying to remember his name and I thought I better not give it away. So I, I think I squinted because I didn't know where I was at. Fuck, we, we're not bred for fucking podcasting. Like. <laughs> Look, with the real beard comes and, and, out and, and 50, and, 55 minutes later. There any we kind are. of recorded media where I can't just say, that was shit, I'm taking that again. I'm not built for, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, thanks for listening. Anyway. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you next week, maybe. Bye. Bye.